Hello everyone. Welcome to Skills Build Training YouTube channel. My name is Sanya and this channel is all about showing you how to become an IT pro fast. So, in today's video we will discuss about proxy versus reverse proxy versus load balancer explained with real life examples. So, let's get started. Many businesses use proxy servers to route and secure traffic between networks. There is often confusion, however, on how this differs from a reverse proxy. Now, before it, let's see what is a proxy server. A proxy server, sometimes referred to as a forward proxy, is a server that routes traffic between clients and another system. By doing so, it can regulate traffic according to the present policies, convert and mask client IP addresses, enforce security protocols, and block unknown traffic. Let me put it in simple words for you. Proxy server acts on behalf of the user. All requests to the internet go to the proxy server first, which evaluates the request and forwards it to the internet. Likewise, responses come back to the proxy server and then to the user. Now, modern proxy servers do much more than forward web requests, all in the name of data security and network performance. Proxy servers act as a firewall and web filter, provide shared network connections, and cache data to speed up common requests. A good proxy server keeps user and the internal network protected from the bad stuff that lives out in the world of internet. Lastly, proxy servers can provide a high level of privacy. Now the question arises here, how does it work? Well, a proxy server works by intercepting connections between sender and receiver. All incoming data enters through one port and is forwarded to the rest of the network via another port. By blocking direct access between two networks, proxy servers make it much more difficult for hackers to get internal addresses and details of a private network. Now here is an important note for you. Do not confuse a proxy server with a NAT network address translation device. A proxy server connects to, responds to and receives traffic from the internet acting on behalf of the client computer while a NAT device transparently changes the origination address of the traffic coming through it before passing it to the internet. Now, let's discuss proxy server versus VPN. On the surface, proxy servers and virtual private networks may seem interchangeable because they both route requests and responses through an external server. Both also allow you to access websites that would otherwise block the country you are physically located in. However, VPNs provide better protection against hackers because they encrypt all traffic. Now let's discuss about the use of a proxy server. Well, there are several reasons organizations and individuals use a proxy server to control internet usage of employees and children. Organizations and parents set up proxy servers to control and monitor how their employees or kids use the internet. Most organizations don't want you looking at specific websites on company time and they can configure the proxy server to deny access to specific sites. Bandwidth savings and improved speeds. Some of the proxies use cached data. Once a user visits a website, these proxies will store all the necessary information through the cached data. Due to this, when a user visits a same page, the page will be displayed faster. However, this can happen only if the proxy has the necessary cache data from the website. Otherwise, it needs to request it from the remote server. In this case, you may fail to notice any page loading speeds. Privacy Benefits Individuals and organizations use proxy servers to browse the internet more privately. Some proxy servers will change the IP address and other identifying information the web request contains. Improved Security Proxy servers provide security benefits on top of the privacy benefits. You can configure your proxy server to encrypt your web requests to keep print eyes from reading your transaction. And you can also get access to the blocked resources. Well, 
There's also disadvantages of proxy server. Well, the biggest disadvantage is that the proxy provider might keep track of your online activity. So for this reason, it would be advisable to research on a proxy provider before using their service. Now let's talk about the example. Well, a very simple real life scenario is like your college internet, which restricts few sites. The proxy first checks the host you are connecting to. If it is not the part of the restricted site list, then it connects to the real internet. Well, this example is based on the protection proxies. Now let's talk about reverse proxy. A reverse proxy server is a type of proxy server that typically sits behind the firewall in a private network and directs client requests to the appropriate backend server. A reverse proxy provides an additional level of abstraction and control to ensure the smooth flow of network traffic between clients and servers. Well, the reverse proxy fields all requests from the clients to the server and it also delivers all responses and services back from the servers to the client. From the client's point of view, this makes it look as though everything is coming from one place. Well, the most essential features that reverse proxies provide are security, load balancing, and ease of maintenance. Basically, it acts as a mediator so the users never interact directly with the origin servers. Now the question arises here, how does it work? When clients send requests to the origin server with a reverse proxy, those requests are intercepted at the network edge by the reverse proxy server. The reverse proxy server will then send requests to and receive responses from the origin server. The difference between a forward and reverse proxy is subtle but essential. A simplified way to sum it up would be to say that a forward proxy sits in front of a client and ensures that no origin server ever communicates directly with that specific client. On the other hand, a reverse proxy sits in front of an origin server and ensures that no client ever communicates directly with that origin server. Now let's talk about its use. Then reverse proxies can hide the existence and characteristics of origin servers. App firewall features can protect against common web-based attacks. Without a reverse proxy, removing malware or initiating takedowns, for example, is difficult. Reverse proxy servers are implemented in popular open source web servers such as Apache. Well, this software can inspect HTTP headers which for example allows it on a single IP address to relay requests to different internal servers based on the domain name of the HTTP request. It also protects from attacks. With a reverse proxy in place, a website or service never needs to reveal the IP address of their origin server. This makes it much harder for attackers to leverage a targeted attack against them. Well, it also provides global server load balancing. In this form of load balancing, a website can be distributed on several servers around the globe and the reverse proxy will send clients to the server that's geographically closest to them. Well, this decreases the distances that requests and responses need to travel and it will minimize the load times. Another use of it is caching. A reverse proxy can also cache content resulting in faster performance. Now if I talk about it examples, then as we know that a reverse proxy provides an additional level of abstraction and control to ensure the smooth flow of network traffic between clients and servers and they are typically implemented to help increase security, performance and reliability. Then a common example is content delivery network. A type of service that delivers the content such as images and content from data centers that is relatively close to each client. As you search for something, reverse proxy will send the relevant data to you. Let me elaborate it with a simple example. Let's suppose your system device is system A and you are sending requests to a server that is server C and you are getting response from the server C directly. But well, there is reverse proxy, which is let's suppose B server, it will get all your requests and then it will send all the requests to server C. When server C will respond back to reverse proxy server, the reverse proxy server will send you the relevant data only and it will remove all the irrelevant data and the, all the harmful data that is not good for your server or your system. And it will not reveal the server IP address to which you sent request. 
Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is load balancer. Load balancing is the process of distributing network traffic across multiple servers. This ensures no single server bears too much demand. By spreading the work evenly, load balancing improves application responsiveness. It also increases the availability of applications and websites for users. Now, modern applications cannot run without load balancer. Over time, software load balancers have added additional capabilities including application security. Now, there exist some different load balancing techniques. So, let's give it a look. Round Robin Well, Round Robin load balancing is one of the simplest and most used load balancing algorithm. Well, a client request are distributed to application servers in rotation. For example, if you have three application server, your first request will be sent to the first application server, second will to the second and third will to the third application server. And your fourth request will be sent to the first application server. So that is how it will work in a round movement. And the best thing about it that it assumes that all application servers are the same with the same availability, computing and load balancing. The next technique is least connection. Least connection load balancing is a dynamic load balancing algorithm where client's requests are distributed to the application server with the least number of active connections at the time the client request is received. Resource-based adaptive. Resource-based adaptive is a load balancing algorithm requires an agent to be installed on the application server that reports on its current load to the load balancer. Fixed weight. Fixed weight is a load balancing algorithm where the administrator assign a weight to each application server based on criteria of their choosing to demonstrate the application server's traffic handling capability. And the last technique is URL hash. URL hash is a load balancing algorithm to distribute writes evenly across multiple sites and sends all reads to the site owning the object. Now, if I talk about it simple example, let's suppose if you are searching for three or four different things, then the server will send requests to different application server and you will get different information at once. So that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any queries, reach out to us in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. I'll see you in the next video.